and welcome, or welcome back if you're returning. My name is Burr, and if you are a fan of MMOs, RPGs, JRPGs, obscure video games, art, or music, then you should subscribe, because that's what we do here. Also, don't forget to like this video, because that super helps us out, and it lets me know that you guys like what we're doing. Um, just a quick, quick announcement. 800 subscribers. We are on our way there, and when we hit it, we are going to be doing a super special live stream where I draw your Final Fantasy characters, or your OCs, uh, your pets, yourself. Uh, yeah, it's going to be super fun. We just have to hit 800 first, so don't forget to subscribe if you've just not done that yet, or share the video if you know somebody who might want to subscribe. We need to speak, Burr. I've been scouring the archives for any information regarding temporal magic since last we spoke, and the results have been rather troubling, to say the least. As you may or may not be aware, ancient Alog is portrayed in the Enchiridion as a cautionary tale. A great empire brought, brought low by its vanity and hubris. However, there are certain apocryphal texts in which the Alagons are cast in a more sympathetic light, if not outright exalted. "'Twas in these texts that I found references to temporal magics once wielded by Alagon mages. Said magic could be used to halt or even reverse the temporal state of a given object. If these accounts are to be believed, and if Gigi's abilities and these magics are one and the same, then it may well be possible for him to turn back the hands of time for the Grand Sairs, much as he restored the Duke's priceless vase. That being said, there is no telling how this will work in with regards to a living being. Consider, if you will, that the vase was filled with water when shattered. Even if the vessel were restored, what would become of the former contents? Would it be filled with water as before? The very same, every drop returned, or would it be different water? Or could the water, when split, be forever lost? I speak of the soul, my friend. For even if he... For even if one could use these magics to restore the dead to life, would they be as they were before, with all the same thoughts and memories and feelings? The Grand Sairs are convinced that they can regain their lost youth, and mayhap they can, but the dead who have entered into Halone's halls cannot return. They cannot. Yet Gigi is nevertheless resolved to try and resurrect Ark Magus Quan. Ah, speaking of which, according to some Charlayan texts in the archives, Archmagus Quan was an accomplished scholar known for his study of ancient Alagon magics. Further evidence that Gigi's abilities are likely derived from ancient traditions, I suppose. But more importantly, I learned the location of the Archmagus' former residence. Mayhap we could find something of interest there, something of which could help us to persuade Gigi to change his course. I had a mind to summon Inspector Hildebrand and make the journey there together. Would you be willing to join us? Excellent. Then let us be about our business. I... I saw you! Hey, Dick! I beg your pardon. Are you accusing me of being a heretic? Y yes you! Inquisitor Sir! I saw you sneak into the archives and see out the forbidden tomes. Saw the mad light in your eyes as you partook of their for for forbidden knowledge. Oh, for the love of... I did all of that for my investigation. <laughs> ah, you admit it. You admit your crimes. That you did secretly, without permission, in blatant contravention of our rules. Red for forbidden tomes. That by virtue of the authority vested in me... By the Supreme Sacred Tribunal of Helotic Inquisitory Doctrine. <laughs> it's the longest freaking name. You. You stupid ignorant. Are you all so desperate to keep your God's damn jobs that you'll go around accusing all the world and his wife of heresy? Is that what we've been reduced to? I'm sick and tired of looking for heretics in every bloody shadow, of trying to guess the secret sins of everyone I meet. It's stupid and pointless, and we're better than that, damn it. We're better than that. <laughs> if, if you will not su surrender yourself, then I have no choice but to, to inform my superiors. Little baby. Oh, no. 
Well, that that all came tumbling out, didn't it? I suppose there's no point in trying to convince myself that I have no personal investment in this matter, or that I still have a professional one. Somewhere along the way, I stopped looking for the guilty and started looking for, for the truth, perhaps, and a way to help those in need. But there's no place for people like that. The Inquisition is there. And it's only a matter of time before that stuttering fool comes back with an armed guard. Let us depart for Idleshire at once. We need to find the Inspector. Hell, well that took a turn. But see, we arrived too late. Inspector Hildebrand has already gone off on his own to confront the Grand Sayers. They came back briefly to trade jingly shine for supplies and whatnot, you see? And the gobby's ear caught them trading tongue flaps about killing dragons in the forelands. When the inspector learned about it later, he said he had to get after them right away and back take Gigi. He said he had a duty, not as an inspector, but as a father. Bugger that. He's got no obligations to a bloody mammoth, especially one that chose to leave of its own free will, as I recall. I swear I turn my back on the boy for one bleeding second and he loses his god's damn mind. I'm afraid he might try to do something reckless. Don't you think we should try to find him and offer a hand lending? I'm rather more concerned about what will happen if the Grand Sairs attack, or worse, kill any of Race Elgar's brood. But first things first, I suppose. But would you be so kind as to assist Mistress Nashu and Julian in their search for the inspector? I will pay a visit to Archimago Squan's abandoned abode in the meantime. Oh, and before you think to refuse, know that you need not fear for my safety. Let us just say that our singular experiences together have endured me to the harsh realities of, well, reality. <laughs> harsh realities. Huh. Could it be the scrawny little shites finally found his spine? Let's start by heading to Tailfeather. I reckon the inspector probably went there first to ask after the Grand Sayers. So if we do the same, we're sure to catch up with him eventually. Right then, I say we split up and make inquiries separately. If you learn anything about the inspector or the Grand Sayers or Gigi, come and tell me. We're headed for Annex Tribe. And my dear boy wasn't far behind them either. What are we waiting for? Let's go! Let's go! The poor unfortunate soul who bears a striker resemblance to Orland is quite firmly embedded in the earth. Would you look at that? The inspector sure gave him what for. That may be, but where the other two get to? Not to mention the mammoth. Why don't we pull him out and ask? Though having said that, it looks easier said than done. Oh, how silly of me. I'm sure you've got more than enough strength to do it, Burr. Uh-oh. That's not worth it. Well, I'll be. He's wearing some sort of magic mask. What makes him look just like the inspector? Just like that man of a thousand faces back in Ulda. No, that's Hildebrand, all right. There's no fool in a mother's eyes. I say, what trouble has my beloved son gotten himself into this time? God, Bert, in his shorts. Why, hello there, Lord Godbert and Inspector Seer. How'd you two end up traveling together? Blind fortune, you might say. I was too far from Tailfeather when the night began to fall. But 
Fortunately, Lord Godbert chanced to find me wandering in the wilderness. Lord Edmond told me all about this recent trouble with the Grand Sairs, as well as Hildy's investigation, and a father cannot help but take an interest in his son's affairs, can he? As for me, I was eager to share with you my latest findings, namely Archmagus' Quan's research notes. <laughs> hmm, I haven't slept like that since I was buried in the lich yard. Well, well, I must confess no small measure of embarrassment to be found in such a state, having been so unceremoniously disposed by the Grand Sairs. But ignominy, no, ignominy, uh, I hate that word. Notwithstanding, I am most grateful for your sucker and pleasantly surprised to be reunited with you all. This wouldn't have happened had you waited for us instead of... Wait, why in the hells are you still wearing that rubbish? An impenetrable disguise is essential when consorting within the criminal elements. Alas, twin see the Grand Sires have grown more perceptive with their newfound youth. Wait, do you mean they've already regained their youth? What about Gigi? Did you see him? Was he behaving strangely? Now that you mention it, his warm, soulful eyes were rather more pointy than I remember. By the fury! Not pointy! According to Archmagus Quan's notes, that's a sign Gigi's using too much magic. If he carries on like this, his ether will be expended and he'll end up not more than an empty husk. This is terrible news. We must catch up to the Grand Zairs at once. Do you know where they were headed? All I heard was that they were keen to slay dragons. They were bound for the Trading Mists, a place called Zenith, to kill a great worm named Nidhogg. Really? That all happened? Huh. Ahem, I meant the other one. Hooray, Spelger. <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, he did. Race Vulgar. Fury, take me. What could they possibly hope to achieve? I, Hildebrand, agent of inquiry, inspector extraordinaire, do hereby ask you all to aid me in rescuing my son and putting a stop to the Grand Sarah's machinations. You know, there's really no need for all that. We came because we wanted to help. I, Yashu, faithful assistant, maker of explosives extraordinaire, do hereby present to you this fresh change of clothing. Capital, I knew I could count on you, Nashu. I shall change on route. Come, my friends, to Zenith, and to Gigi. Make ready, my friends. The final battle with the Grand Sir is at hand. Oh. Uh, it would seem my wounds were more serious than I thought. I fear I am in no condition to confront our foes. There is but one thing that could restore me to my former indomitable self. Don't you worry, I've got some salamander oil right here. Shall let me give her baby boy a massage? <laughs> oh, my dearest mummy! <clears throat> Mother, dearest, I would not impose upon you. Not when my ever loyal associate Burr stands ready to minister to my muscles. Don't tell me you're embarrassed. Let mommy take care of little Hildy's hurts. My dear wife, I know you mean well, but let Burr handle it. There's a bond which transcends time and space and personal boundaries. If that's the way of it, I'm counting on ye, Burr. Great. More massages. Let us brook no further delay. Come, my friend. Coat my body in oil as you have done many a time before. Why do you hesitate? Have we not done this time and time again? Oil me up, woman! Ooh, how it soothes my aches and pains. Quickly now, knead it into my flesh. Knead as you have never kneaded before. Ah, the ruh. Got ah, such furious kneading. I applaud your enthusiasm, but mayhap I urged you to excessive force. Huh. Huh. Nay, you were in the right. Already the gentle warmth begins to spread throughout my body. The fires of righteousness burn anew in my breast. Hold, my son. Though your passion is renewed, you may yet be spurred to greater feats of Mandervillian strength. Derived from the purest essence of salamanders, the ancient legacy of House Manderville, Salamanderville, to you, my beloved son, now become a proud father. I bequeath this most sacred of oils. Salamanderville. 
Could it be that the legends were true? Your muscles shall shine with the brilliance of a thousand suns. No mortal man will ever have the power to do you harm. Verily it is so, for by his grace did I once weather the slings and arrows of a bandit horde and bring my hammer of justice to beat upon their wicked heads. The time has come, Burr. Take this oil and help Hildy become the Mandeville man he was meant to be. Oh my gosh. I, I am ready for my final oiling, Burr. Oh, who? Ah, the, ma oh, the, the, the Salamanderville, how it flows into every nook and cranny. Quickly now, lay your hands upon me. Massage me with all your might. Urgh, yes. Yes, that's the spirit. I can feel it building and rising, rising. Oh my gosh, stop it. It's so awkward. <laughs> such passion, such fervor. I am the inferno unbound. The tempest unleashed, but I've not yet begun to pose. <laughs> I am, I am Amanda, Amanda, Amandaville man. Haha, <laughs> that's Alamandaville is my, my word. I have never felt so alive. Such vibrant colors, such intense sounds, such... Such fragrant smells. Mother, father, Bert, t'was your oils and your strong yet tender fingers which opened my eyes to the glory of creation. I am a gentleman inspector reborn. Onward to Zenith. No matter the laws of nature they pervert or the limits they break, the Grand Sarahs can do not to stop me. Okay. My girl just rolls with it. It's so cinematic. Snap! <laughs> now they're all sexy and young. They meant by pointy. Grand Sayers, I have come for my son. Oh, must we do this now? We have a dragon to slay. There is no need for any of this. The war is over. But not for long. The worm's death will give rise to a new era of fire and blood. And we, having consumed his eyes, will use our new powers to win untold glory on the battlefield. Our legends will echo in eternity. You would do countless innocents for glory? No, I won't allow it. Over my dead body. Far be it from us to deny you that this is the end for you. The ultimate end. Damn.
This is overkill, poor guy. Have faith, my love. He is our son. Don't make mama get the frying pan. Gigi, my beautiful boy. Pray do not look on me with such pointy eyes. Let Papa Hildy take you home to our gazebo. Stop calling me that. My name is Vivi. Vivi. I remember everything. My powers. My purpose. My grandpapa Quan. I made them young again, but it's not enough. I need more. More. I need the worm's eyes. And then I can finally bring him back. I'm sorry, Gigi, but no, you cannot. Grandpapa Quan is gone. He's right, Gigi. Mayhap you could restore his corporeal form and breathe life into it, but his soul, what made him your grandpapa, is forever beyond your reach. That's not true. I can restore anything to its ideal form, to the way it should be even. Even Grandpa Quan. Even you, Papa Hildy. Uh-oh. Please, Gigi, you have to stop. If you keep using your power, you'll die. Huh? It didn't work? I don't understand. Your clothes are still dirty and tattered. <laughs> That's his true form. As I should be, Gigi. For my every waking moment is as the gods intended. Every day I live life to the fullest. Every day I enjoy grand adventures. I found your grandpapa's research notes. What he gave you wasn't the power to make things the way they were. He gave you the power to change the world, to make things the way you yourself believed they should be. That's why your magics have no effect on the inspector, because you know in your heart that this battered and bruised form of his is, in its own way, right. My thoughts exactly, Inquisitor, sir, and it is for this self-same reason that you were unable to make Grandmaster Quan younger. In your heart, you knew there was not that needed to be changed. Your beloved Grandpapa was exactly as he should be. Your every day was to be treasured and worthy of celebration. Then, then what about the Grand Sairs? Why was I able to make them young again? All you truly knew of them were the stories they told, wondrous tales of daring do by heroes in the prime of their lives. It's no wonder you were able to envision them as such. That's all they ever talked about, when they were young and free and full of fire. At first, Archmagus Quan didn't understand the true nature of your abilities. He struggled to deduce why you could not make him younger as he originally intended. Eventually, he realized that your fond memories of him were preventing you from conceiving of him as anything but an elderly creator, and that the only way to achieve his goal would be to take them from you. 
but you were all he had left in the world. No longer a mere mamet, but a friend, family, his only family, his grandson. He couldn't bear to lose you, so he renounced his quest for immortality. But I still lost my memories in the end. He was afraid of leaving you all alone in the world, afraid that others would attempt to take advantage of you and your magics. So before he died, he decided to take your memories from you after all, to protect you. But despite his best efforts, something remained. Something stronger and more powerful and more resilient than anything Archmagus Quan ever dared dream. You were never broken, Gigi. You were never abandoned. All he wanted was to set you free. Free? Free? To do what? Whatever you like, Gigi, don't you see? That was his final gift to you. A new life. A new story all your own. This has all been very, very touching, but we're not getting any younger. Well, you aren't, at any rate. We have suffered your meddling long enough. I had intended to use this trap to kill the worm, but since you are so perfectly positioned... Oh no. I am Bibi, grandson of Archmagus Khan, and Gigi, son of Hildebrand! Where did his armor go? <laughs> well, she turned pink, so... Huh? Wait. Oh, I guess maybe restored... It's 
so sad. She's just burning with her inner beast in her motherly rage over there. It's like it never happened. With the last of his strength, he turned back the hands of time. Not just for the pillars, but for us all. He made us all as we once were. As we were meant to be. <laughs> After all that gallivanting about, I give bugger all. What about my misspent youth? I was not meant to be this bloody old. <laughs> such a fine day. Never have I squatted with such perfect form. I may have well reached my physical peak. What rot? Act your age, you daft sod. You look foolish. You should be grateful. Gigi saw what you had become and gave you a second chance. That was our second chance. To relive our glory days. It was all rather silly, though, wasn't it? Maybe Quan had the right of it. Maybe it's not so bad growing old. I was a coward when I was young, but now that I'm old, I'm not afraid to say things like, I love you, Doris. <gasps> oh no, that's so sweet. <laughs> You're a blind, bloody fool, God Spart. Take it along, snooze. Good morning, Hildy. I say, am I dead again? Quite alive, Inspector, along with everyone else, thanks to Gigi. The Grand Sairs are also in our custody. <laughs> That's my boy! Where is the little tyke, anyway? Gigi, he... Gigi embarked on a grand new adventure. He is... He is no longer with us. I see. If that's what he wanted, then... Then I could not be happier for him. I am sure Archmagus Quan would feel the same way. What do we do now, Inspector? It is, is it not obvious, Nashu? The wide, wide world beckons to us with the promise of mystery and wonder. We shall resume our never-ending quest for cases, perplexing and profound, and perhaps one day we shall meet young Gigi again. Uh, so funny. Seriously, though. How sad. Huh, I hate to admit it, but this whole mess got me thinking that maybe, maybe it wouldn't be so bad if I really did have a grandson. Oh. You did right by Gigi, Hildy. Your father and I can see that. We're proud of the men you've become. And I am proud of you too, Weather, for finally coming to terms with the ephemeral nature of physical beauty and allowing yourself to age gracefully. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> I didn't think she was going to take kindly to that. Gracefully, was it? <laughs> I fear we may have had a failure to communicate! <laughs> what a shot. There he goes again! Wait for me, Inspector! Wait! <laughs> Naji was so funny. She's just all about it. It's like, hello! <laughs> Hark! What is that curious light I spy in the far eastern sky? It is this oh so familiar <laughs> scent which fills my nostrils. Do, so, do I smell? A case? Worry not for me, my friends. For wherever the world want for succor, I, Hildebrand, shall be there till we meet again. And so it goes. Um, I say, you do know that so long as the core remains intact, little GG is not actually dead. That's right. So dry your tears, boy. There's no need for all this moping about. He has fallen into a dormant state because he used up all his ether. His core will gradually recharge as it draws upon the ambient ether, and in time he will awaken from his torpor. I shall tend to this child for now. <gasps> oh. Cool. I was like, he's a heal robot. <laughs> As for these three, I should be glad to take them back to Ishgard in your stead. A most generous of offer, my lord, but hardly necessary. After all, tis my duty to bring them to justice. Oh, yes. It was my duty. After everything I said to that young Inquisitor, I can't go back to Ishgard. They'll toss me in a gowl and throw me away the key if they don't kill me outright. So go to Idleshire and live in Hildy's gazebo. Someone ought to look after it while he's away, no? That doesn't sound all that bad, actually. Full glad I am to accept uh, your offer. Free house, woo! <laughs> she can go hang out at that library. <sighs> I suppose there's nothing for it but to wait until he comes back down. It was a most graceful strike, my love. You haven't lost your touch. <laughs> So funny. Gosh, I love these quest lines. Ah, it's great. I suppose there's nothing for it but to leave the grand stairs to Lord Godbert and for me to see it to Inspector Hildebrand's gazebo. I'd like to thank you for everything you've done. If you find yourself in Idleshire, come and see me. There are a few arrangements that I need to make, but I can't imagine that it will take that long for me to settle in. Thank you, my friend. Until we meet again. Looking back on the course I've run, it's hard to not to think of the man I was and feel ashamed. Before I took on this case, I had only left the capital a handful of times. The rubbish I believed, the facts I considered unassailable. Fury, take me, what a fool I was. 
If I hadn't met you and the inspector, Gigi, I would have never realized how much I had come to hate my job, nor would I have discovered how much more satisfying it is to seek out the truth, the whole truth. One might say that getting labeled a heretic and having to flee Ishgard is the best thing that could have happened to me. After all, now I am free to start a new life here in Idleshire as a consulting inspector. Oh, what shucks. Ah, but enough of that. There is someone I would like you to meet. <gasps> oh, it's a baby, Gigi. Lord Godburn made some modifications, as you can see. His smaller size should allow him to absorb ether more effectively over time. We thought that if he were to travel with you and share in your grand adventures, that maybe... Maybe it would hasten his reawakening. <gasps> so we get to travel. Oh my gosh, now we have a little Gigi to follow us. Thank you, my friend. I do hope our paths cross again someday. May the fury bless you and keep you. Oh, I love his own. <laughs> He's got his own inspector suit. That's cute. Little bow tie. I can't read this writing. It's like secret code. No idea. Hildebrand will return. Hey all, so I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me. If you liked this video, please like this video because that'll help gather more folks to the video with the channel. We are aiming for 1k, so we're almost there. Also, if you are new and you haven't yet, please subscribe. Uh, we have a Discord link that is very, very fun. That link will be in the description underneath this video. And I also have all my other social media links and stuff that will be under there as well. And also, I do have a Patreon if you're interested. That link is below and that does help <laughs> get us uh, to support the channel so I can be here and do more stuff with you guys. All right, from uh, all of us to all of you. <laughs> Bye.